What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. This story's called, That's Not How This Works, Lady. A few years ago, I had this lady come in asking about her layaway. She asked me if she only wanted a few pieces out of her layaway, if she had to get the whole layaway out, or if she could just get those few pieces. I told her it was all or none of it, and whatever she didn't get, she's getting the money back for. She said okay and continue to shop around for a bit. Now, one thing to note was this was was at the height of springtime for allergy sufferers. I have really bad allergies, and honestly, this day I was riding the struggle bus on being at work. You could tell I wasn't at 100%, and that all I wanted to do was go home and sleep. Anyway, so she comes up to the counter to get her layaway out. She picks out the two pieces she wants to keep and tells my coworker she wanted to return the other four pieces. Coworker returns the four pieces she didn't want and gives her the money back. The woman tells her she didn't give her enough back. My coworker looks at her confused and the following conversation takes place. Here's the cast iron skillet. Coworker? Me? Customer? Yes, ma'am. I gave you back the price of each item as it states on your receipt. No, you didn't. I had six pieces in my layaway. You still owe me for the other two pieces. <laughs> no, ma'am. You kept those two pieces, so you don't get the money back for them. Let me speak with your manager. What's going on? She wants her money back for her layaway. She had six pieces in the layaway. She paid for the full layaway. Only way to get her pieces out at the time. We ran off a very outdated system. And returned four of the six pieces. See? She shows me the receipts. Ma'am, the math is correct. The register isn't gonna mess something up like that. You started with six items, decided you wanted to return four items, and keep two items, which are in your bag. You can't get money back for the full layaway unless you return the two items you kept. You want understanding? Yes, I am. It's simple math. I grabbed the four items she didn't want and pulled the two out of her bag and set them on top of her bag. Now, you started out with these six items, right? Yes. And they totaled to X hundred XDX dollars and XDX cents. You decided not to get these four items, so you returned them. Four, and I add the prices up plus tax, XDX dollars and XDX cents. That's right. Okay, so why would you think we owe you for these two items you're keeping. Ah, you don't get it. Ah. Woman walks away and leaves. Husband grabs her bag and shrugs like he's over it while apologizing and saying, I'll talk to her. Our store phone rings a few minutes later and it's her. She then proceeded to tell me she wants to talk this out like mature adults because she doesn't want to call corporate and complain. She said she felt like I didn't care that we ripped her off and that I didn't want to be there and I was very condescending towards her. I stopped her and said I wasn't condescending and that she didn't understand at all that she can't get the items for free, which is what she was telling me she wanted. I told her I'm sorry if it seemed like I didn't want to be there because I really didn't as I did not feel good due to allergies. I told her I really wanted to be at home sleeping because I was having a bad allergy attack that day, but I couldn't get anyone to come in and work. I told her I didn't appreciate the fact that she couldn't understand the simple math problem and to have her husband explain it to her better since he clearly understood what we were saying. I proceeded to tell her to feel free to call my district manager at blah 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 number because I would be calling her as soon as this conversation was over and informing her of this issue. District manager was called and I explained the situation. District manager could tell just by talking to me on the phone that I didn't feel good. I had worked for her for a few years by this point. I faxed her the receipt information so she could look at it all. The lady called her 30 minutes later and district manager told her the same exact thing. District manager calls me after the conversation and tells me to go home and get some rest once so and so from another store gets there in 15 minutes. <laughs> what? How does she not understand that? That's... that's... <laughs> Okay, well, Karens have never been the most intelligent people, so are we really surprised here? 
All right, guys, this story's called What Time Do You Get Off Work? This happened a couple of weeks ago, but the party involved tried to come in today, and I had to tell them they were banned. So I decided to share my experience with y'all. It was the end of a 60 hour plus, 60 plus hour. <laughs> week at the gas station convenience store I work at, customers have been more aggressive than they usually are, making my days longer and more strenuous than they usually are. The only saving grace is knowing I'm off the next day and I have a six pack waiting at home, but it wasn't that bad that day. Then the last hour of my shift rolls around. This kid, or so I think, he looks really young, hops out of the passenger seat of someone's car and walks in. I greet him like anybody else as he approaches the counter. Let me get a six pack of Newport Smooth 100s. I walk over to grab them. As I was going to ask for an ID, I'm interrupted by him. Actually, do you have a cotton of them things out back? I check the drawers and don't find any for the brand he was looking for. No, sorry, just the two on the shelf. Why not? The governor recently passed a law banning the sale of all menthol cigarettes starting at the end of the month, so he stopped ordering menthol. Oh, I uh, give me them last two then. Sure, can I just check your ID? Uh, oh, hold on. He runs out back, back to the car. He's at the driver's seat window, talking to someone. A woman emerges out of the car and walks in with him. I'm assuming she's his mom. Hi, how are you to- Get me a pack of Newport Smooth 100s! Before I could speak, she interrupts again. You got a carton? No. Why not? So I explain why we don't have a carton of them things anymore, as I did previous to her son. She rolls her eyes. That's stupid! I nod in agreement because she's not wrong. Whatever! Give me the last three! Unfortunately, I can't sell you these cigarettes tonight. Why? Because you had your son come in and ask for these exact same cigarettes, and when I asked for an ID, he went out and got you? I can't do secondhand sales for tobacco products. They're yeah, for me, though. That might be the case, but because you sent him in here for cigarettes and he didn't show an ID, it looks like you're buying them for him. I already told you they were for me. I still can't sell you these cigarettes, so I'm going to decline the sale tonight. I'm sorry. So she stands there at the counter staring at me as more people come in and the line behind her grows. Ma'am, I need you to step aside. I have other customers waiting to be rung up. She steps aside and her son starts chiming in as I'm ringing other people up. So, why can't you sell us cigarettes? I ignore him. Hey, yo! I'm getting annoyed, so I respond. Look, I already explained to both of you why I'm refusing the sale. If you're not going to get anything else in the store, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I apologize to the customer I was ringing up, and before the next person can walk up, the son steps up to the counter. Give me a scratch ticket. Sure. Did you find your ID? Ugh, fire truck you. Oh, excuse me. I motion for the next customer to come up. As I'm in the middle of this next transaction, she has more to say. Actually, you can't refuse a customer. If they want something, you legally have to give it to them. I absolutely have the right to declare decline a customer for any or no reason. No, you don't. I've officially given up being professional at this point and just start talking as I normally do. All right, you're still not getting those new ports though. Get me the manager. Not here. When is he in? She's here in the morning. Also, managers aren't always men. You really don't know the crap you just started. All right. The mom grabs her son by the arm and starts pulling him away towards the door. Don't worry, baby. I know the owner. Actually, they both stop. We don't have an owner. We're a corporate store. They continue towards the door and are outside. The son pops his head back in. Yo, what time you get off work? And an hour? I bet. I'll see you and see how mouthy you are then. 
<laughs> okay, buddy. Bundle of sticks used for fuel. Yep. Before the door closes completely, he throws in one more bundle of sticks burned for fuel. The store's finally empty, and it's been a few minutes. So I step out for a s <laughs> cigarette. It's funny, because what they call cigarettes in uh, the UK and areas. When I come out, they're parked in the fire lane, staring at me. I just wave and continue smoking until another customer comes in. I love my job. You know, when I first looked at this, I thought that said I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. I mean, no, that would have been bad, but like a twist ending. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, this kid just tried to buy some cigarettes. That's, that's funny. But anyway, tobacco is foul. All right, this story's called Never Assume What Languages a Person Can or Cannot Speak. So this is an old story for me. It happened back in 08. When I was a young, intrepid stock person at a big box all-purpose store, including a grocery section, I had a working knowledge of where pretty much everything was in the store because I was all over the place. But the grocery department had its own stock team specifically, so I wasn't as knowledgeable there. Now, two things to note here. I am of Lebanese descent, and I was working in South Florida at the time. For those that don't know, South Florida has a significant Cuban population, but not so much Middle Eastern folks. I got confused for Cuban all the time because I had the darker skin tone, similar to a lot of Cuban folks. I also speak fluent English, Arabic, and French, but I was born and raised in the Midwest, so my accent gives no indication that I might be of Middle Eastern heritage. On this fine afternoon, I was wheeling back an empty tub back to the stockroom after having emptied out one department over. Walking through the main aisle next to the grocery, I hear an, excuse me, not rude, but definitely not polite either. I turn around to find the Arab equivalent of a Karen. So let's call her Khadija pronounced. We're not going to do that. Khadija. Khadija is a 30-something looking woman wearing yoga pants and a skin-tight shirt and a really fancy hijab and jewelry. Because that makes sense. Stan. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> because that makes sense. Standing with their husband. I grew up in a predominantly Lebanese community in Southeast Michigan, so I definitely know the type. The conversation goes as follows. How can I help you, miss? I'm looking for specific item, but I can't find it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not as familiar with the grocery section, so I'm not sure where that is. Let me grab one of my colleagues for you. One moment. I could see one of the other customer service guys in the grocery section, so I radioed him to come over and help her out. He'll be with you shortly, miss. Thank you, but I'm in a hurry. I thought you worked at a New York store. I'm sorry, miss. I don't really work work in this section. Colleague is coming right down the aisle now. Khadija to her husband in Arabic. They always get these stupid kids to work in these places, but they don't know how to do their job. This fatso doesn't know his head from his ass. The husband gave Khadija a look, probably because he saw my expression turn from my customer service smile to a frown. I had an internal debate about what to do next when her husband spoke. Stop talking. I think you understood what you said. Of course he didn't. He's an idiot. He doesn't know his, their, their hands from his feet. It's an Arabic idiom. Doesn't translate the best. In Arabic? Actually, I understood every word you said. I don't appreciate being called fat and stupid. An older lady like you should know better than to insult people trying to help you. Worse, you wear your hijab like a hypocrite. Pretending to be devout, yet you abuse your perceived social lessers. You should have some respect for yourself. Hadi? Ja looked like she had just been hit by a damn truck. Her olive skin turned ghost white and she sputtered at me. You? You speak Arabi? Obviously I do. Maybe next time you'll think before you insult people who help you when you think they can't understand. Khadija grabbed her husband's arm and dragged him out of the store, completely mortified. I could hear her husband yelling at her in Arabic that he warned her not to be a, <laughs> a bimbo all the time, <laughs> especially when she 
she doesn't know who understands her. I wasn't personally that offended, but I won't deny it was satisfying to scare some sense into her. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, my brothers and sisters. Um, let me first say, uh, don't assume uh, when someone's wearing a hijab that they're like extra pious or something, because that's like, that's the sort of stereotype that actually a lot of hijabis don't 100% appreciate. And I've heard that, you know, having known plenty. So just, just a little note. Also, uh, <laughs> this is a really cool story. Uh, I, how does this guy know so many languages? I mean, obviously you learn languages if you try to, but that's a lot of work and very, very impressive. And I just love stories of people assuming someone else doesn't know a language and then they just whip it out like, oh, woman, I'm fluent. And it's great. It's great. All right, this story's called, I don't believe that product exists. Update! I'm the idiot. Commenters below are in fact correct. And the sugar is eaten up during fermentation. Many rums have added sugar or caramel for color. However, wow, thank you. I don't know. That's out of context completely. Why would you put that at the top? First time post, this interaction happened several years ago at a terrible liquor store I used to work for. The cast. There's OP, which is me. Coworker. My co worker misinformed customer is about halfway through my shift and i'm just settling down to eat my lunch i get a few bites in when co-worker comes into the back she's 19 legal age to purchase and sell alcohol where i live and hasn't been here long and while she soaks up knowledge like a sponge has a lot more to learn about the product hey op i know you're on your lunch but i just got a question and i don't know how to answer it okay i'll be right there i head out to the floor and approach the customer who is near the wall we keep hard liquor the following interaction happens hi there did you need a hand finding something yeah or is this sugar-free rum for those who don't know rum contains precisely two ingredients water and sugar i guess yeast of some sort but other than that rum is fermented and distilled sugar i look over at co-worker who has a look on her face that says see what am i I don't believe that product exists. No, it exists. Everything comes in sugar free. I'm on this diet right now getting in shape and part of it is not having any extra sugar. So yeah, I wanna get some sugar free rum. I proceed to explain that rum is made entirely of sugar and that regardless of choices in booze that his body was just gonna metabolize all that alcohol into sugar anyways. But if he must drink his most sugar free choice is vodka. Apparently that wasn't what he wanted to hear as he let out a frustrated sigh, fine, grabbed a bottle of Captain Morgan's, the rum with the most added sugar, and proceeded to pay and leave. Coworker and I laugh until we hurt once he's gone. Eight years on and I'm still laughing. That is hilarious. That is why one of the biggest weight loss tips is just cutting out alcohol. Maybe not completely, but if you drink a lot and you're trying to lose weight, cutting back will definitely help. All those carbs, where do you think they're going? And no, drinking until you vomit doesn't cancel itself out. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.